Well, we are definitely nearing the end of the term in this multivariable calculus course, and fatigue has probably set in. What I'm about to do, you can't call a full derivation. It's more of a display comparing some things that we've seen, some of which began in the second semester calculus course. Um, so we have our double integral representing area. Remember, dA could be in terms dy dx, it could be in terms dx dy, or it could be converted to polar r multiplied by dr d theta. And then we have this that has recently come about. Um, if you want to calculate the mass of that planar region or lamina, basically take these little small rectangular divisions um, with a double sum, adding them all up, and multiply to find the mass of each of those little regions and add them all up. Um, this density times area will give you a unit of mass, and summing them all up gives you the mass of the planar lamina. So it's on the xy plane, densities in terms of x and y. So then we had in second semester calculus and then recently revisited here um, the length of a curve and this notation might not have been introduced in your previous calculus course but um, velocity vector or writing it as the square root um, of, a, of a Pythagorean uh, kind of expression has definitely been there and then we've revisited this and we met our first line integral and that was when you um, multiplied a function, and that function could be in two or three variables. So it literally could have a z um, if the curve was in space, like the path of a fly, for example. Um, we convert everything to t. The velocity vector um, is part of this ds expression. So again, just trying to draw some comparisons across a couple of universes here. Let me scroll a little bit. So surface area we met, um, I, though I don't know that we use this capital S notation. What we had, let me just scroll here a little bit, was this was our formula um, for surface area. And there's a region and then this G of XY is our surface. Let's change colors here. All right, so our surface was Z equals G of XY. And we have so many to choose from. Perhaps it's the paraboloid. But only the surface area of the paraboloid that resides over this triangular region. So this would be our region, and I'm looking for, I wonder what the area looks like um, above that region right there. What is the surface area? Think of that almost like casting a shadow onto a triangle. So that was our surface area formula from recently. So let's jump right to the punchline here because this is called a surface integral. And here is kind of what I would call the first real instance of a surface integral when we're trying to measure something on the surface besides its area. And again, that's a density function. This surface is in three dimensions, X, Y, and Z, it's clearly there. And the capital S or the D, D with related to the surface is this expression. So if I could write it out, let's go here, row of x, y, z, um, square root one plus the x partial derivative of your surface plus its y partial derivative squared, dA. I want you to note that I left a little hole inside of this double integral. How can there be a third 
variable in our double integration. And part of me is just wants to just jump out and tell you, and part of me wants to remind you of some things we've been doing with line integrals. We only care about the density of the surface itself. And we have a definition for the surface. What does Z actually equal? And notice that only uses the variables X and Y. So in our next uh, little video segment, I'll demonstrate an example where we have to deal with that Z because this only has two variables in it, folks. X, Y, and Z is three variables. All right, we'll get to the bottom of this.